Hello and welcome to SSE TV. I'm Katherine Connor with your top news from around the center and we're bringing you a special edition this month from Camp Pendleton. As you can see over my shoulder, we are at Red Beach where the ship to shore maneuver exploration and experimentation that's S2ME2 advanced naval technology exercise is just wrapping up. SSC Pacific had more than a dozen technologies demonstrated here to help bring the Marine Corps added capability and added lethality as they transition from the sea to the shore. Why are we doing this? Because we want to get better. And the world has changed. Our adversaries are gaining capability, and we don't want a fair fight. And so we're always looking for an edge. We're here in, a, in an attempt to create speed and innovation and get cutting edge technologies quicker to our sailors and Marines. We've known for, for some time, um, certainly uh, since the OIF, OEF era has taken place, that our adversaries are quickly catching up with us. Um, uh, access denial to forcible entry has been a growing problem for some decades, but certainly gotten a lot worse while we were focused on fighting a technological primitive enemy um, and focused understandably almost exclusively on that. Now, a, a cunning and persistent enemy, but technologically uh, primitive. The lethality of that force, and I look at all the technology that, uh, that our, our industry partners have brought out to us, uh, that our warfighting development centers come here and team with those individuals. I look at the, at the realm of possibility and the opportunities that are being presented by the great folks that put this great event together I think the potential, I won't say it's unlimited, but by golly, I'll tell you what, it, um, uh, the lethality of the force is just going to go straight up. Paper 55 is an unmanned aerial vehicle that is uh, used and owned by uh, Spay War. It is used as the data mule for uh, the uh, bathymetry data that's coming uh, from, from the seafloor. Always keep a hold of this when you're doing these changes so this pad does not move from the knee. Okay. I'm helping host the Juno Project, Jungle Urban Non-GPS Orientation. It is also coupled with the Bond Project that I'm working on, Battlefield Objective Navigation Display. This is for the Gotenna. So you're going to scan for it and you're going to open this up. What the Gotenna is, is it's a low bandwidth VHF radio. So it's like a walkie-talkie basically. Um, so you're able to send messages to other users. The Jungle and Urban Non-GPS Orientation, or Juno Project, is meant for the dismounted infantry marine so that he can find his location in a GPS denied or GPS degraded environment, as is often happens in, in jungle, uh, underneath tree canopies or in urban environments where the GPS signals are reflected. The navigation huge being out in the field. If they said like if the team leader, the squad leader has it, everybody else can still have the watch and you can pinpoint where an enemy is or um, where you can see where all your people are and you can even message through it and read that instead of having to use comms, which are loud a lot of the times. And, uh, very, yeah, very cool seeing where they're going with all this stuff. Our particular technology, uh, two technologies, one's called Dante, it's an antenna, uh, sort of a breakthrough both in cost and in weight. We're 10 to 100 times less heavy and 10 to 100 times less expensive than existing technology for this class of antenna. What this antenna does is it focuses the radio waves in one particular direction. It's a great sense of accomplishment. We started developing our system under S&T funding at Spaywar, and we are literally testing in the backyard at, at Spaywar, developing links out at, at Topside, and we've had several opportunities to showcase our technology and demonstrations, but really the ultimate goal is we would like to see this used. Expeditionary manufacturing the benefit of what we're doing is we're being able to take this technology and put it in a place that it hasn't been before within the military. So we can go to an austere environment, forward deployed, where you have parts that are breaking and vehicles and such that are going down. We can replicate parts, build parts, and get them back in the fight or until they can get back and get fixed by traditional means.
honestly believe that any of this half the stuff that's here existed. I was like, wow, it's definitely uh, a lot more advanced than I had thought. I think it's a really important event to have because you have a lot of people that come out from different corporations, different branches, so it lets everybody view what we have, give their feedback on it. We've, uh, we were testing radar and they were excited, just as excited to be working with us as we are with them and we can give them our input and they explain the ideas behind this and everything that we can use it for and it was, it was very cool. Um, we're just looking for ways to take advantage of technology. Uh, manufacturing, the things that are out there, artificial intelligence, additive manufacturing, to try to create capabilities that are going to make us as individual Marines and our organizational units better. That's what we're looking for. Thanks for watching and be sure to check in next month.